get set to continue the opening week of matches in the Pro Volleyball Federation. Tonight, the Orlando Valkyries played their first match in franchise history as they host the Atlanta Vibe, who won the very first match in league history, defeating the Omaha Supernovas in a five-setter in Nebraska a couple nights ago in front of over 11,000 fans. So pleased to have you along for the ride with us here tonight alongside the Beach Volleyball All-American at Florida State, Madison Fitzpatrick. I'm Sean Davis, and thank you for spending your night with us here in Orlando. And Madison, folks around this area call Orlando the city beautiful. And I think if you ask anybody around the volleyball community, there is no sight more beautiful than seeing professional league format volleyball here in the States. That is very well said, Sean. Now these athletes can stay closer to home. Their families and friends can come watch. They can earn a livable annual wage in the States, which they deserve as be the best in their sport. Not to mention the younger generation of volleyball players can look at the league and can see a bright future for the sport they play. It can motivate them to pursue volleyball as a career and give them a picture of what, if, what is possible if they take this sport as far as it can go. It's exciting for so many reasons and it's a historic year for the sport. And Madison, Atlanta, as I mentioned, comes in having won their first match. They also come in as the number two preseason team here in the PVF. Orlando, meanwhile, comes in as the number six preseason team as selected by the Pro Volleyball Federation coaches here before the season began. They're two teams that are built in entirely different ways, yet despite that, they have a shared sense of optimism, of expectation here tonight. You are right, they, they are definitely built in entirely different ways. The Valkyries 14 player roster has a combined professional experience exceeding 58 years. And yes, you all heard me, almost 60 years of professional experience. Whereas Atlanta Vibe has a combined 22 years of professional experience. Now, although Atlanta is younger, their team is comprised of all Americans, three time national champions, Team USA members, and is absolutely stacked with talent. Certainly are. And it's hard to really parse things out, right? You know, you look at all the teams around the league and everybody is loaded top to bottom. It is made for very compelling volleyball. And we're just two matches in and the crowds have certainly responded as we see some of the folks on screen right here in Orlando. Another great crowd expected here tonight. It's a model that is already taking off. Exactly. It is very loud. It is very exciting. The fans are hype here in Orlando and we are set for a very, very fun matchup. A really high level, high skilled matchup. Orlando, a great volleyball city too, Madison. When you consider the tourism, the pedestrian traffic that comes through this city, when you consider the fact that UCF has been the best team in the Atlanta, in the uh, American Athletic Conference for a number of years, and then when you also consider the fact that the ADP has a tournament here on the sand, it's a great volleyball town. The AAU also has their national championships right here in this gym. It is a perfect place to spend and to really kick off this league, one of the seven host cities. Exactly, I remember coming and playing in tournaments here as a kid. It's a fun place to play. And let's go ahead and talk about some of the players, some of the star players that we're going to get to see here today. For the Atlanta Vibe, you're gonna to need to look out for Aaliyah Edmund, the outside hitter who made a huge wave in Atlanta's opening match versus Omaha with 27 kills. She finished her collegiate career as Kentucky's all-time kill leader with 1,978 kills. Then we have libero Morgan Hentz, and where to even begin with this superstar? At Stanford, she's a three-time first-team All-American, a three-time national champion, a three-time Pac-12 champion and a three-time Pac-12 libero of the year. Now we've got Tori Stringer, the 5'11 setter who leads this Atlanta team with confidence and experience. Before a, a successful pro career, she was a two-time ACC setter of the year at Louisville, and her debut for the Vibe proved just as impressive as her resume with 41 assists and 24 digs against Omaha. Now we're going to go ahead and look at the Orlando Valkyries. You're going to need to look out for Adora Anai, her professional experience through the past six years has taken her all over the world. Before her pro career, she was one of the best athletes to ever go through Utah, becoming the first Utah player to earn back-to-back -back all American honors and the first player to ever earn first team honors. Then in the middle, we've got Kaz Brown at Kentucky. She's the career record holder in total blocks, solo blocks, and block assists. Three-time ABCA All-Region and three-time All-SEC. And finally, I can't not mention the leader of the offense for Orlando, Wilma Rivera. 
the setter who, while playing for the Puerto Rico national team, was named best server for the World Olympic qualification in 2024. In college at Louisville, she was a two-time ACC setter of the year. And Sean, I know that was a lot, but the rest of the roster is just as stacked, if you can believe it or not. I can certainly believe it. You and I both come from a background of calling college volleyball, and really good teams have several All-Americans on their roster. And this is a format here where every team is full of All-Americans, including the Vibe and the Valkyries. Madison, as we take a look at the matchup here tonight, what are some of your keys for these teams? Well, there's a lot. There's a lot to look at. There's a lot going on in this game. Of course, we're going to look to Adora Anai to step up and take charge there at the pin. You're also going to need to look out for Jill Gillen, the 5'7 outside who led Arkansas to their first ever Elite Eight appearance in the National Championship Tournament this past season. You're also going to need to look for the middles to get involved. So it's going to be important for Orlando to stay in system. And of course, it's going to be important for Atlanta to stay in system. And who better to keep them in system than Morgan Hentz, who I talked about earlier. Look at Karis Watson to get involved. Look at Shelly Fanning to get involved in the middle. I think since this is the pro volleyball league, since this is a pro team, we're going to see longer rallies. This is better than college. This is the big league. So expect to see more powerful hitters, expect to see a faster offense, and expect to see longer rallies. Couldn't agree more with you, Madison, as we get set to initiate the fifth of seven teams in the Pro Volleyball Federation here in Orlando tonight. First serve moments away from Edition Financial Arena. And we'll be back. Well, we're gonna stay right here, actually. We're gonna... There's been a whole lot of hype building here in the gym. And we're gonna stay as we introduce the homestanding Valkyries to this great crowd in Orlando.
crowd continues to build, the decibels continue to peak as we await professional volleyball here in Orlando. Atlanta, two tough road matches, surely, in the span of three days as they get set to try to go 2-0 and oh to start off their campaign. The Valkyries looking for a resounding win over the team that knocked off not just Omaha, but preseason number one Omaha. And it was the way that they did it, too. In the fifth set, they went on a five-point run to come back from a three-point deficit. They took it 15 to 13, very exciting fashion in front of, what did you say, 11,000 fans? It was a huge atmosphere. So we know the Atlanta vibe knows how to play in big-time pressure, big-time circumstances. Let's see if Orlando can rise up and take them down now. Orlando's starters include Michaela White, Shania Joseph, or excuse me, Shania Joseph, Jill Gillen, Casimir Brown, Wilma Rivera, and Adora Anai. Georgia Murphy will be the starting libero for the Valkyries. Meanwhile, for the vibe, it'll be Tori Stringer, Leah Edmond getting the start, Shelly Fanning, as well as Reagan Pittman, Ali Linehan, and Karis Watson. Morgan Hentz will be the starting libero for the Vibe as we get set to get this match underway. It'll be Michaela White, the 6'4 middle blocker who hails from Riverdale, Maryland. Get us underway. And we are underway here at Edition Financial Arena, and what a start and a serve for White. And that's exactly what you want out of the gates. An aggressive float serve in between two serve receivers, really well placed by Michaela. White, who played her college volleyball at James Madison University, won a couple of CAA titles while there with the Dukes. Free ball to Orlando. Jill Gillen with the roll shot over the vibe block. Meanwhile, there on the opposite side for Atlanta. Swinging away was Leah Edmond. She did not catch high hands, though. Another point to the Valkyries. Yeah, Leah Edmond going for high hands. We talked about it earlier. Earlier, she's coming off 27 kills versus Omaha. She's definitely the hot hands for the vibe. Now, as hot as those hands are, their head coach Todd Dagenet, who hails from here in Orlando, spent 15 years as the head coach at UCF. He said that was not the plan, but that was what the matchup gave us. That was the hot hand we had, and we kept setting her because she kept delivering. Exactly, and now we can look for, in this game, for them to spread out their offense more and set their middles more. Speaking of setting the middle, that is exactly what Orlando does with Kaz Brown. Jill Gillen. Back set off the block. Good coverage by Pittman. Here's Shina Joseph. Pittman, second effort off the block. Good coverage by Joseph. Gillen! Off the edge of the block and down. And what is so special about Jill Gillen is that she's 5'7". So this means in transition, you see here, she has to work really hard to get all the way off the net to have her full approach in front of her, uses her arms, max jumps, and tools the block. Perfect swing by Jill. Great start for Orlando. So far, Shina Joseph with the top jump spin. The jump top spin, I should say. Words are hard as we get started. We're excited, folks. How about Kaz Brown with the off speed? We've seen a whole lot of hard and heavy swings by Orlando. A changeup, if you will, for the graduate from Kentucky. Kaz Brown is one of those players that can really hammer the ball. She's got a wide arsenal of offense, so it's really smart to mix in those shots early and keep the defense on their toes. Three time all SEC at Kentucky has had a five year pro career as Kaz Brown, as Shina Joseph, who played her college volleyball just up the road in Gainesville, commits the service there. We mentioned Todd Dagenet, and he is, of course, the longtime head coach here at UCF, now the head coach of the Atlanta Vibe. And that's an ace serve. A fortuitous kiss off the tape for Shelly Fanning. Fanning, one of a couple of players on this Vibe roster who played her college volleyball at Baylor. 
Here's Gillen once again. Jill Gillen jumps so incredibly high. She uses all of her vertical, all of her body to snap on that ball, all of her momentum moving forward. She's only the second Razorback in career history to record 2,000 career kills in her college day in Arkansas. Such an incredible, incredible athlete. A moment ago, you saw her head coach, Amy Pauly, looking on. Pauly, a player who said Gillen, who you see on screen now, she might be nervous. She might panic a little early on because the level of pro volleyball is higher than what she is accustomed to in college. Uh, Madison, I would say she has acquitted herself quite well. I would completely agree. And, and right there, that missed serve is okay. You want to go for a one-to-one -one ratio. So she got an ace, and then she missed her serve. They can live with that. 6-4 in favor of the Valkyries here. Early on in set one in the city. Beautiful. Pittman serves it in. What a nice swing. The great coverage by Hans. Kaz Brown looked to tool the block, didn't catch a hand, point to the vibe. I like seeing Kaz Brown run behind. For those who don't know volleyball, that's a slide. She was trying to tool off the hands down the line and just missed a little too far outside. And Reagan Pittman back to serve once again, had retired from volleyball, was running an academy for a couple of years and came back to the sport, decided to try out for the vibe and here she is as Orlando tools the block. And there is Adora Anai doing the honors. And we see the experience of Adora Anai. She felt that set just a little higher than she anticipated, so she slowed down her approach and made sure to swing at its highest point. Six-year pro Adora Anai, who is an all-everything player at the University of Utah, swings again. Off the top of the block, covered by Gillen. Shina Joseph. Won't get the touch. Point Atlanta. I said earlier we are going to see much longer rallies, and that's because the defenses on both teams are so elite. These defenses are as good as they come, so expect the ball to stay alive for a little bit longer than we're used to seeing in college. That'll send Allie Linehan back to serve. Her maiden name is Allie Stumler. She recorded the first kill of the Pro Volleyball Federation in Omaha, and that's interesting because Madison, the last kill she recorded in college was in the national championship game over Texas to seal it for Kentucky in Omaha. That is such a cool story. Someone needs to do a feature piece on that. Allie Linehan knows how to show up in big moments. She's such an incredible athlete. Wilma Rivera, you mentioned the best server in the Olympic qualifiers, goes back to do that for Orlando. Linehan swinging away. Shina Joseph off the block. And point goes to the Valkyries. And that was a good cover off the block by the Valkyries. They're underneath the block. They're underneath their attacker. They're ready to dig up that ball. And then you see there Shina just ripping it through the block. Point Valkyries. Strong serve by Rivera once again. And that attempt missed the hands. Leah Edmond swinging away from that left pin position, number 13 in red. And we've got a challenge, I believe, by Atlanta. Now, it's important to note when we take a look at these challenges, the Pro Volleyball Federation uses the same technology that is used in the Olympics, that is used in the Olympic qualifiers, that is also used in the VNL. And when it comes to out versus in, this Bolt 6 technology can figure that out on its own. So what we likely are seeing here in terms of the challenge for Atlanta is whether or not that ball was touched. It was called no touch point Orlando. As it stands, the Valkyries lead at 10 to 6 here in set number one. Now these challenges have to be called within seven seconds of when the fault, or what they think is not a fault, has occurred. They've got to be quick with it. They punch it in on tablets. Each team does on their team bench. They choose to challenge. And then after they sound the horn, which you likely just heard, then they choose on the tablet what they want 
to challenge. And so our officials here this afternoon are going through the process of finding out exactly what's taking place. Now, nobody here in the gym is making that call. There is a command center in Frisco, Texas that is doing the honors. Taking a look at 22 different high depth cameras spaced all around the gym here at Addition Financial Arena. Just a tremendous financial investment by the Pro Volleyball Federation. Some really cool technology that you can liken to what you see at Wimbledon maybe when you watch tennis and it determines whether or not a ball is in or out, etc. But it has so many more capabilities here. The point remains with the Valkyries and Wilma Rivera serves it in and out once again. I did mention in the open that Wilma Rivera when playing for the Puerto Rico national team was named best server for the world Olympic qualification 2024. Maybe there's some nerves right off the bat. We can definitely expect to see her serve heat up. We are now being told that that was a timeout by Atlanta. It was not a challenge that they called. We are actually not on the floor. We are up a bit away from the scorer's table. Laura Anaya sends it in for the Valkyries. Edmund off speed this time over the block. And Anaya rolls it from the back row. Good coverage by Hentz. Edmund had it rejected. Second effort, once again rejected. Pittman this time from the right pin. And that was a smart set by Stringer. She needs to spread out her offense. Orlando Block looking very comfortable blocking Edmund. They're set, they're ready, their hands are pressed, their arms are pressed over the net, so spreading out the offense is going to be huge for Atlanta to score. That'll send Tori Stringer back to serve. And it goes to Georgia Murphy. And there's Killen. Rejected by Pittman. Shina Joseph looking cross court. And the point goes to Orlando off a touch call. And that was a broken play. That was an out of system play sent by the libero. But China Joseph took her time, let that ball cross over to her right shoulder, hit it at his highest point, and snapped a nice sharp angle. Quick set Pittman on the slide. Out of the middle, there is a kill for number three in red, Shelly Fanning. That was really solid setter hitter connection there. She took a little bit of space away from the setter, kind of spread out that ball, dropped her pinky, cross body swing to the deep corner. Overpass and put down. Fanning takes care of business once again. And as a volleyball player, that is expected. If you get an overpass, you have to take care of it. Shelly Fanning was so much experience under her belt, and she took care of it like she should have. So a four-point lead for Orlando, make it five. Joseph misses the end line for Orlando. The jump topspin is a very difficult serve to attack. The toss has to be perfect. Your approach has to be perfect. The height of the ball has to be perfect. Everything has to be working together for it to be in. There's that Bolt 6 technology showing you that it was indeed out. Another overpass by Orlando, but they keep it up. This time off the top of the tape. Good coverage by the vibe. Pittman! From the right, Pittman really heating up here in set one. And Pittman right there took advantage of an open seam. Kaz Brown, the middle blocker, just a little late to that block. Couldn't get her arms into that seam to close off that block. And that was taken advantage of. Timeout by Orlando. We will take it with them. The Valkyries lead here at Edition Financial.
Parkway here in Orlando. That's a service error by Atlanta. And a point to the Valkyries. That's her Valkyries, number 10, Jill Gillen. And that'll send Jill Gillen back to serve for Orlando. Quick set to the middle. Second effort by Karis Watson. Adora Anai off the block. Pittman had it stopped. And there we see Adora Anai set that block perfectly. Diving that right hand into the seam, taking away that ball, taking away any open net for that ball to go through. Straight down stuff block. And then I saw a little stare down. This is heating up a little bit. As it stands, the Valkyries lead 15 to 12. Off speed. Pittman rejected once again. Hence with an out of system ball, out to the pin, and that is rejected. Allie Linehan got a whole lot of nothing. Look at Kaz Brown right there with that long reach, pressing over the net, palms pointed towards the ground. There is no question why she set record records at Kentucky. Service error by Jill Gillen. And it'll send Pittman back to serve. China Joseph. Off speed. What a smart shot by Joseph. And that's something that Coach Pauly told us that Joseph is working on is more shots, not swinging into the seam, but taking a little bit off of it, being smart and having court awareness. And she displayed it right there perfectly. Jump tip from the back row. Dilker tries to dump it over on second contact and couldn't get it there. Another point to the Valkyries. Linehan had it tipped back. Madison, how strong has Orlando been at the net here in set one? They've been so technically sound. Their feet are set. They're reading the set very well. They've got a lot of hang time. Very disciplined blocking performance by the Valkyries so far. And by the way, that was Michaela White, number nine in that teal and blue color, who tipped that back to the floor. She did not play volleyball till she was 16. What a player. We'll be back. Here in set number one. And it sounds like we've got a challenge. The point went to the Valkyries. We heard that challenge horn here in Central Florida. And that is Devaney McClarty looking up at the monitor to see exactly what Bolt 6 is going to try to tell us. Again, you cannot challenge whether or not a ball was in or out. 
And so again, with us being separated from the floor, we're not sure. There we go. It's whether or not there is a block touch. And there is no block touch by Adora Anai. Some really cool technology that Orlando is really loving right now. Atlanta loses a challenge, but they do get two per set. So as we approach what could be the closing stages here in set one, still plenty of volleyball to play here in set one. But as we approach what could be the end, they could get that challenge right back. On the slide, there's Karis Watson. I love it, and that shows how much trust the setters have in Karis Watson. She runs the exact same set, which was a slide. The block wasn't there, and she delivered right through the seam. Watson, who's played pro volleyball for the last seven years, if you go back to her college career at Clemson, led the Tigers in hitting percentage as a senior, well north of 300. Here's Edmund. Dug up. Georgia Murphy, my goodness, what a play. Pittman off speed, had it rejected, and that falls to the Terraflex. And what a dig to keep the play alive by Georgia Murphy. Coach Polly told us at the beginning of the season, she walked into the gym as quiet as a mouse and said, I'm going to take that role. And look at her right there, performing at the highest level. And then a block to seal the deal. Seven point lead for Orlando and Wilma Rivera back to serve. That's a nice pass by Hens. Edmund off the top of the block, played up by Jill Gillen. And a free ball now to Atlanta. Hens takes it on one. And the set out to Edmund is stopped. An exclamation point kind of block. They had time, they were there. Perfectly pressed over the net, and look at the blockers fired up. That was a free ball. Usually when you get a free ball, you need to convert and score. But Orlando took care of that block. Very technically sound blocking game by them so far. And with that, they lead by eight. Rivera stays back to serve. It was an Atlanta team that really excelled in the blocking department against Omaha in the opener with 16 against the Supernovas. What a fantastic performance by her. And of, of course we expect Atlanta to warm up, heat up and come back. But so far it's been all Orlando. Well, the only blemish here in set one for the Valkyries is apparently whatever's going on with the left hand there for Shina Joseph getting tended to by the medical staff here at Addition Financial Arena. But how pleased Amy Pauley must be with her squad that has plenty of experience. There's Audi Cruz, a 26-year professional who made the cut here in Orlando, looking on and leading the dance efforts on the bench. The Valkyries are within three points of winning set one. Edmund off the top of the block, another quality block touch by the Valkyries. And there's a much overdue, if you were tuning in from Atlanta, block. It, uh, my goodness, Watson. It's a really good read by Watson. She delayed her jump a little bit, dove her arms into that seam and read that cross-court attack perfectly. Still a seven-point lead for Orlando as Kamali Hiapo, it appears, goes back to serve. Adora and I. Edmund. Back set, Joseph off speed. Dilfer takes it on one, out of system ball to Edmund. No problem. And that right there is what we saw a lot in their first match. Edmund has such a smooth arm swing. And you see that ball set a little inside, but she is so athletic and dynamic. She gets her feet there and swings very sharp cross court. Hammered a number of out of system balls against Omaha. That one failed to clear the tape. It would have taken four contacts to get it over by Orlando. Nice run here by Atlanta. Come on, ladies. Come on, Valkyries. Let's go. Quick set to the middle and white. 
Back row. Dug up by Murphy. Free ball to Atlanta. What a great defensive effort by the Valkyries. It's going to take another. Gillen runs out of room. It was a good, good touch. You have to expect, really respect the effort here by Jill. One of the things that Coach Polly told us about Jill is that sometimes she has to tell her to go home. She has to tell her to stop practicing because that's how hard of a worker Jill Gillen is. She got to where she is because of hard work. And Coach said, you know, there's a lot of naysayers out there because she's 5'7 who doubt her. And Jill greets that with a lot of confidence and works really hard to overcome that every single day of practice. I would love to know exactly what her vert is because that 5'7 plays up a lot. We are going to find out and we're going to let everybody know in the next broadcast. It is so impressive. She's hitting at the height of some of these 6'3 girls. She works really hard in the gym. She works really hard offseason and it really pays off in her vertical. Gillen, the Arkansas Razorback made an Elite Eight run with the Hogs. They ultimately lost to Nebraska in the regional final. The Cornhuskers, as they so often do, made it all the way to the championship game but lost to the Texas Longhorns, who won back-to-back -back national championships in Tampa, just down I-4 from us here in the state of Florida. Got the wave going here at Edition Financial Arena. As the crowd continues to build, and the anticipation does as well. Gillen on serve, receive, and there's another stuff block. This time, Edmund comes away with it. Never count Atlanta out. In their first match, I said it already, they came back to take set five. And here, Edmund rising up, pressing those arms over the net. Shelly Fanning doing a really good job getting there and closing that block. Nice serve. Nice job on serve receive as well by Murphy. Back row. And I cross court, missed the sideline. Point Atlanta. And I do want to point out Allie Linehan in the back row, keeping a lot of plays alive with her really stellar defense, throwing out some one arm digs, doing a really good job defensively to keep the play going. Set to the middle, there's White. And that's what it takes. When the Valkyries are in system and they're able to run their entire offense, right here you see them running a 31, a little bit of space from the center, spreading out that blocker. Karis Watson seeing the hands of the blocker, swinging crossbody and down. That puts an end to a six-point run for Atlanta, who trailed by eight and trimmed it for the moment to two. Now it's Orlando within two points of the first set. Ace serve. And that's why you take the risk of the jump top. And fantastic technology by the Pro Volleyball Federation. We see that ball is clearly in, but that jump top spin, when it's got all that power behind it, is really hard to receive. 24-20, Orlando. Another jump top spin, fanning out of the middle. Killing, and Orlando wins set one. Perfectly placed transition set. A little bit out of system. That set coming from Adora. Jill does a great job transitioning off the net, having her full approach in front of her. And we talked about her vertical, and she uses all of it, tooling off the high hands of the 6 2 Shelly Fanning. A fantastic first set here in Orlando. We can't wait for set two after these messages.
We welcome you back to Edition Financial Arena here in the city beautiful Orlando, Florida, as the fifth of seven teams in the Pro Volleyball Federation gets underway here tonight. It's Atlanta playing their second match of the season, winning the opener for the entire league in Omaha, dropping the first set to Orlando, playing their first match in franchise history. Valkyries won it. 25-20 in set number one. Sean Davison, Madison Fitzpatrick on hand with you as we get set to get set number two underway. Allie Linehan will do the honors for the vibe. We're back underway here. At Edition Financial, Jill Gillen hit north of 400 in that first set. She takes the first swing for the Valkyries. Leah Edmond takes an early swing for the Vibe and misses the touch. And the remainder of Orlando, who jump on the board first. On the slide, that's a terrific swing down the line. Karis Watson. Karis Watson loves running that slide attack. It's quick. You see, she's jumping off one foot, swinging down the line and avoiding the hands of Jill Gillen. Perfectly placed swing. Adora Nye steps in on serve, receive. Joseph from the right pin dug up by Linehan. There's a Nye with a strong one handed dig. Edmund cross court, Gillen keeps it up. A nigh back row, overpass. Joseph puts it down. Whoa, what an effort! Great coverage by Atlanta, but Orlando puts another point on the board nonetheless. We knew there would be long rallies. Look at the effort laying out one arm dig by Linehan, who's been outstanding on defense causing the free ball and then outside to Jill. The middle blocker, I do want to add, held in the middle because Paz Brown made it seem like she was going to swing out of the middle. The middle blocker was held there. Shelly Fanning, therefore, didn't have enough time to get out to Jill and close that seam. China Joseph with the service error. That one. It was essentially Orlando all the way. Atlanta trimmed into the lead at a few different junctures, but the Valkyries found a way late in the set. And now we're knotted up at two in the second. An eye back row. Hence with the out of system set out to the right pin, and that will find the floor. Yassiana Presley, a pickup from Omaha, records the kill. What fantastic technology by Bold Six. We see there immediately that that ball was in. Yasiana hit that ball at its highest point, snapped on it perfectly, and hit it really sharp cross court. National Player of the Year at Baylor Presley will now take another swing. This time down the line, picked up by Murphy. Free ball to the bottom. 
out of the middle. Fanning's tip, knocked back, and good coverage by Levine to get it over. On the slide, pass Brown, tools the block, point Orlando. Kaz Brown there using the hands of Leah Edmond. First of all, with the block, she was a star of this play. In system pass, running the slide, hitting off the outside hand of Leah. Kaz Brown, a player who previously had played in Germany, the Ukraine, France, Greece, and then two years in Athletes Unlimited before coming to Orlando with the most recent kill for the Valkyries and then quickly back the other way. Shelly Fanning responds with a kill of her own. You see there, Tori Stringer, such an elite setter, found the hands of Flan Fanning perfectly. Served down the line, Gillen gives chase. It'll go out of play. And that's what it takes, the aggressive serves, keeping Orlando out of system, not allowing them to run their full offense. Atlanta leads it now five to four here in set number two. And it'll send Kaz Brown back to serve. Just clearing the tape. Quick set goes to the middle and Fanning right into the campfire, right in that soft spot. And nobody could get there for the Valkyries. Fanning, with all of her experience, has a lot of court awareness. She sees that hole, drops her elbow ever just slightly, tips it right over the head of the middle block, perfectly placed. Everyone around it, but no one went for it. And so, off her most recent kill, Shelly Fanning going back to serve the first four-time all-conference player in Baylor history. She grew up with Yasiana Presley. And there's Ali Linehan coming away with a block. We haven't called out Ali Linehan's name that much so far throughout this match, but she has come up in really big ways defensively. Right there, setting the block perfectly. Good timing by her and stuffing it down. Nice pass and a tool block. Orlando responds with a much needed point courtesy of Adora and I. And we see all that power behind Adora Anai's swing. She has a really long approach. She swings through the ball and powers through to tool off the hands of the block. Wilma Rivera back to serve. Out of the middle, there's Karis Watson. And when you've got a tremendous server like Wilma Rivera, that quick swing and that end to the service rotation is equally huge for the vibe. It's a perfect in-system pass. They ran a quick offense right there, which was smart. The block wasn't set or pressed, and they sided out. Out to the pin, in an eye. Dug over and put down, Michaela White. I mentioned right before the break in the first set that White didn't touch a volleyball until she was 16 years old, didn't even compete until she was 17. Went on to have all-conference type career, an all-conference career at JMU. Has played professionally in Finland, Italy, Romania, and now here in Orlando. And there's a touch ball against the Valkyries. Another kill for Atlanta off the slide. Karis Watson with another one. Six, Atlanta here in set two. Overpass, tipped, Joseph picks it up. And over on two, it finds the floor. There's Tori Stringer. Tori Stringer felt the opposing team not on her, didn't feel the blocker on her, took advantage of the situation. Really good court awareness, court vision. Tori Stringer has so much experience playing at a high level. Stringer, who formerly was Tori Dilfer when she played at the University of Louisville. Dumping it to the floor for a four-point lead. That's now down to three.
Taylor White back to serve. Watson has been the hot hand here in set two for Atlanta. And really, the vibe Madison have been incredibly efficient from the middle attack. They have, and they're taking advantage of Jill Gillen being a little undersized as a blocker. They're running Watson behind a lot and having her hit over Jill Gillen's hands. Speaking of Gillen, she goes off speed. Lenahan picked up by Murphy. Gillen lets it fly. Dug up and over, and I believe we'll see a net violation here. I saw the net vibrating. Yep, Jill Gillen on that block went up. She felt Tori Stringer going over on two. She went out to block it and touched the net. So Orlando calls a timeout. We'll take it with them and be right back. Back here in Orlando, it's Atlanta who drops set one and serves with a five-point lead in the second frame against the Valkyries. Jill Gillen dug up by Watson. Great coverage by the middle from Clemson, but that time it goes out of play. Point Orlando. There's a good dig by Watson in the back row, lined up nicely. You see here trying to tool, trying to tool off the hands, but Orlando with a really sound discipline, discipline block, pressing over the net, and Atlanta not able to control it. So the lead is down to four, and Shina Joseph goes back to serve. Joseph, who has also competed on the Canadian national team, Drops that serve into the net. And I mentioned before how successful a jump top spin can be. It's a high risk serve. Sometimes it's either an ace or a miss because everything has to go perfectly with the toss, with the approach, with the swing for it to go over. Tori Stringer serves it in. Killer missed the sideline. You have to appreciate the range from Jill Gillen. She's hit every single area of the court. We've seen some roll shots. And you see here her trying to tool off the hands on the outside arm, but just barely misses about an inch out. Stringer serves it in again. Rivera down on the deck to set that one. And now the system ball by Hentz. Back row. And an eye. There you go. Kaz 
Brown tooling the block for the Valkyries. And it wasn't just the offense. Cass Brown is the one who dug that ball. And then you see her with all of that effort, running the slide, running the set that they talked about, getting into the air, and then tooling the block. It was an all-around fantastic effort by Cass, and it paid off. And that'll send Audi Cruz back to serve. The first ever three-time All-American at the University of Florida, who's had a brilliant international career. And there she is to dig up that attack. Anai off the edge of the block and down. Let's talk about Addie Cruz for a little bit. She competed in the 2016 Olympic Games with the Puerto Rican national team. Like you said before, UF Hall of Fame. She's a three-time All-American. She's a legend of the sport. She's one of the reasons they have 58 years of professional experience on that team. Cruz did not start set two. Something worth mentioning to those of you at home who maybe aren't very familiar with volleyball or at least professional volleyball. Eight substitutions per set allowed here in the Pro Volleyball Federation. Not quite as few as the six that you get in international play, but also far fewer than you get in the NCAA when you're allotted 15 per set. So we'll see each side really manage those effectively as Cass Brown operates on a tight slide through the seam. And that's one of the advantages of a quick back set. Shelly Fanning not there to close the block. And Kaz had an open seam to, seam to swing through. Fanning on the other side with another kill out of the middle. Fanning herself going back to serve. Over on two and to the floor it goes. Wilma Rivera. The two-time ACC setter of the year right here doing what she does best, using her court awareness, using her experience, feeling that the block wasn't on her and catching the defense of Atlanta off guard. A player that her head coach, Amy Pauley, said is demanding and competitive, but not in a crazy kind of way. A tremendous personality in the gym as we take a look at the latest point scored by the Vibe. Karis Watson getting in on the act once again. She has been terrific here in set number two for Atlanta. Edmund back row. And that was one of the things I was going to bring up that Orlando needs to look out for is Edmund from the back row. Atlanta, in their first match against Omaha, ran her through the back row a lot. And that's a huge advantage for this team because now, instead of three attackers on the front line, two attackers on the front line, they've got three with her in the back row. Edmund, the first player to sign with the Federation, recording the most recent kill for the Vibe. Point goes to Orlando. Net was vibrating like crazy. Somebody was in it for Atlanta. Oh, yep, Allie Linehan in the bottom of the net. Just grazed it there. Karis Watson might have caught the top part of the tape with her forearm as well. Might have been both of them. Either way, point Orlando. Linehan tooling the block. Good looking swing for Allie. And a lot of the times you'll see a server target and go after a front row player. They got Allie Linehan to pass that ball, but she was ready. She ran up, used her full approach, and tooled off the block. She's an all around player. Linehan, a player who represented the United States at the Pan Am Cup Final Six and did so with her Atlanta Vibe teammate, Tori Stringer, in fact. Won the silver medal, did the U.S. in that one as Orlando responds with a side-out kill. And that was Shina Joseph behind the center. Coach Pauly said she's got a lot of hang time. She hangs and she waits to swing. So right now they're coaching her to speed up her arm swing and go for those deep corners, take a little bit off of it. And she did it perfectly right there. Ace serve for the Valkyries. Michaela White, who started this match off with an ace serve, records yet another and will serve once more. 19-15 Atlanta. Passes tight. Dilfer handles it and sets Watson out there on the right pin. And Kaz Brown, the middle for Orlando, jumped with the setter, expecting a setter dump. 
And then Tori feeling that she was on her back set and took advantage of that middle block not being there. Kamali Hiapo checks in. Spent the first four years of her collegiate career at Arizona, then went to BYU. It's drafted by the Vi. Audi Cruz, second swing. Kept up by Hiapo, now dug back over to the Vi. Set her dump, covered by Murphy. Cruz, third try. Edmonds with the heavy roll. Joseph, dug up by Hiapo, great rally. Cruz, backhanded across the net. Point Orlando, I believe Atlanta was in the net once more. And this is what happens when we have a mix of all Americans. We've got a mix of Olympians, national champions, and athletes who have competed internationally all around the world. This is what we get long, exciting rallies just like that. Timeout Atlanta will take it with them. Their lead is down to four here in set two. Looks like Atlanta decided not to call a timeout, so we're not going to take a timeout either. It remains a four-point lead for the Vibe. They were thinking about it, though. Edmund is thinking about winning set two, tooling the block. And Edmund, so experienced, really waited on that approach. And with both of the block right in front of her pressing, she managed to swing through it. And that's all that power and momentum in her approach powering through those hands. Five point lead for the Vine. Cruz. Rivera falling to the floor as she set that ball. Point Valkyries. And I think we might see a challenge. Atlanta saying there was no touch. There was a touch, excuse me. Atlanta saying that was a tool off the block and out on Orlando, but it was initially ruled in the net. So it'll be Devin McClarty and Bill Thornburg who will wait the decision from Frisco, Texas. And again, in case you're just joining us, really cool technology, bolt six doing the honors for us. 22 high-def cameras around the gym. Did Orlando touch it? We'll see here. No. Point that freeze. And you could tell from the arena, all the fans didn't think there was a touch either. So an unsuccessful challenge for Atlanta. They are down to one for the remainder of set two. Still, though, the vibe within four points of equalizing this match one set apiece. Dilfer getting chased right in front of the bench. A strong serve by Orlando. And this is as small as the lead has been in some time. How about the rallies late in these first couple of sets by these teams, Madison? Volleyball is a game of momentum. Each team heats up at different time and gains momentum. But right now, it's all Orlando.
welcome back to Orlando here as the Valkyries, the fifth team of seven to get underway in the brand new Pro Volleyball Federation. They're taking on the Atlanta Vibe, who won the very first match of the league, defeating Omaha in five sets in Nebraska in front of 11,000 fans. Audi Cruz got to it, and Murphy takes it over. Out of the middle, and Fanning puts it away. Crowd got on their feet after that tremendous defensive effort by the Valkyries, but it goes in vain as the Vibe clean things up. And that was a smart set by Tori Stringer. Quick set to Shelly Fanning, who's got seven kills on the night so far. Outside and an eye. Left all alone at the pin, and she hammers it to the floor. Talk about some power. That's exactly what you want as a pin hitter. You want a one-on-one -on -one situation. You want a nice open net to swing through, and Adora took advantage. Lead is still three for Atlanta. They'll reset. Lenahan dug up and over by Cruz. It also goes out of play. Point vibe. Casey Evans checking in for Atlanta. A player seeing her first action here in the Pro Volleyball Federation, who just wrapped up her career in, at Georgia. Signed on with the Vibe as a free agent and has been tremendous leading up to the season. A player that they see having a very bright future as Orlando continues to try to mount the comeback here. And we saw it earlier, targeting a front row attacker in serve receive, trying to get them off balance. But a quick serve received past Wilma Rivera, so talented, gave her a set right to her hands. And Anai powering through. Anai's second in career kills at the University of Utah. In many ways, one of the best to ever play volleyball out there at Utah. And there's an ace serve! Guess who? Wilma Rivera. I said it before, but I think this is such a cool fact. Playing for the Puerto Rican national team, she was named best server for the world Olympic qualification in 2024. All that power behind that serve, and she's going to force Atlanta to call a timeout. Atlanta calls timeout, but we will stay here. We got plenty to discuss here, Madison. You can feel the momentum starting to shift toward Orlando. If you're Atlanta here, though, assuming you get an in-system pass, who do you want to set? I definitely want to run through the middles. Orlando looking very comfortable blocking the pins of Atlanta. They're kind of camping out there. They've got their feet set. They're blocking really well the pins. So I would run a quick set through the middle, maybe a slide. But they have to stay in system here against Wilma Rivera's tough, very tough top spin serve. Well, you mentioned setting the middle, and I completely agree with you, Madison. The good news, if you're tuning in as a fan of Atlanta, the middle that you got in the front row, they're both really good. But Karis Watson's been particularly hot here in set two. They've got, they've got her in the front row. Yep, Karis Watson has seven kills on the night. Hitting 640. That is a really high hitting percentage. She's been very efficient. They've been running her on the slide. They've been running her on the three. They've been running her through the middle quick set with a one. She's kind of been hitting from every area of the court, and it's been difficult for the Valkyries to block. And if you're Orlando, you've got the exact person you want serving right now. Wilma Rivera will serve it in again. Nice pass by Hintz. Out there on the right pin, Yassiana Presley. An eye cross court for the kill. It's one thing to be powerful. It's one thing to have a really strong swing. It's another thing to be able to have all of that range and to aim so perfectly where the opposing team is not. Really sharp cross-court swing. Adora Anai with the power and the range. One point, second set. Strong service rotation by Rivera. Linehan wants to end it. Cruz got there. Joust at the net and it falls on Orlando's side of the net. And I think the ref might be calling Karis Watson in the net. Let's take a look at this. Yep, that is what she saw, and that's what she called, and now it's all tied up. 
That's the right call, and we are tied at 23. Rivera serves it in again. Edmund plays it up, and Presley rockets one through the seam. And Presley does a really good job hiding where she's going to swing. She's a very deceptive attacker. Look at that, looking like she's going to swing cross court, kind of dropping her thumb and hitting in between two defenders down the line. Cruz on serve, receives. Set point for Atlanta. Hence, picks it up. Dilfer hits the deck. An eye off speed, tipping it to the floor. And that's the experience of Anai right there. That set was a little high. She came in fast on that approach. But you see there with the hang time and then the smart shot tipping just right over that middle block. We will go beyond 25 points here in set two. We're knotted up at 24. And so it's an eye off the tip. First to 25, win by two to claim a set. And Orlando is going to scramble here. Quality coverage by Atlanta. Thank you. I Lenahan dug up by Murphy. Joseph had to wait on that one. Rejected by the Valkyries. And Atlanta, who was so strong late in Omaha, could perhaps drop set two after leading the majority of it. And I always say, when you win a point off of a long rally like that, it's almost like you get two points. You have that confidence in your belt. After winning that long of a rally, it's basically like two points. And just like that, Orlando surged back. And we could have set point right here. It is, in fact, set point 25-24 in favor of Orlando. Atlanta had one. Now the Valkyries do as well. It's an eye back to serve once more. Wow! How about an ace to seal it? And I think Atlanta wants to say that that ball hit the antenna and then went in. But this arena absolutely erupted thinking that that was an ace. I'm not sure from our vantage point, but we'll find out. Devaney McClarty called it an ace serve. Yep, it, it looks like it hit the antenna from that point of view. Certainly worth another look, and I completely agree with you. It does look like that serve caught the antenna. An incredibly tight one. And after a couple of unsuccessful challenges by the Vibe, that one on the money. And we are knotted up at 25. That close to set two for Orlando, but we play on. To the pin. And Cruz. Back row, there's Presley. And that's why it's so advantageous to mix up your offense. Look at all these weapons we have on the floor right now for Atlanta. Marley deciding to set back row. And Presley swinging through that ball, taking advantage, catching that Orlando block off guard. Orlando had one timeout left. They decided we're going to go ahead and use it right here and discuss things a little further. Trailing set point for the second time here in set number two. Madison, I asked you about Atlanta. I'm going to go ahead and ask you the same thing for the Valkyries. If you're Orlando and you get an in-system ball, who do you want swinging away? And it's going to sound repetitive, but I would say go through the middles. They just gave Audi a chance. They set her at the pin. She wasn't successful. I say get an in-system pass, quickly convert it to a middle, and see what they can do. And worth noting for Orlando, Michaela White is the middle blocker currently in the front row for Amy Pauling. 
And while we've got some time, I asked Coach Polly what the difference was for those watching, the difference between college and pro, if you could sum it up nicely. And she said, in college, you've got a couple of All-Americans on a championship team, but in pro volleyball, you've got an entire roster of All-Americans. You've got All-Americans on the bench. So, of course, we're going to have rallies that go longer. We're going to have more powerful swings. We're going to have a quicker offense, and we're going to get the full exciting moment that is right now with all of these All-Americans on the team. Yeah, when you take a look at these teams across the Pro Volleyball Federation, it's like picking what type of champagne you like. Out to the pin, Cruz looking cross court, missed it. Point and set to the vibe. And so, that will take us into the intermission here at Edition Financial Arena. We'll take a break here and rejoin you at the intermission after these messages.
batter's decision very well. And then just to point out some individuals for Orlando, it's been Adora Anai. She's got eight kills. For Atlanta, it's been all their middles. We've got Karis Watson with seven kills, hitting 640. And Shelly Fanning with seven kills, also hitting 640. And that's a testament to Morgan Hentz, Atlanta's libero, back row, keeping the team in system and allowing them to run all of their options. Well, Orlando through the first couple of sets hitting 160, Atlanta hitting 120. This is a defensive-oriented game here, Madison, whether it's been the quality digs in the passing or whether it's been how physical they've been at the net. Exactly, and that's, that's what you want and that's what you would expect when you've got Olympians, All-Americans, national champions, all facing off here today in elite defense, both net defense and floor defense. Well, the intermission continues here at Edition Financial Arena. We'll come back to break down more of the action to the first two sets after these messages. we have on our hands here at Edition Financial Arena and certain plenty, certainly plenty of highlights to look at, Madison. Exactly. I mean, we've got two elite level setters dishing out perfect sets to the pins through the middles. Kaz and Brown. such solid blocking right there by Kaz Brown. Orlando's got six total blocks. But here we have Atlanta powering through, combating that. Every single area of the court has been hit. There's so much range happening throughout all of these athletes. And there we, we see the slide. Karis Watson weaving it down the line, dropping that thumb. And then we see the experience from Shelly Fanning in the middle, taking something off of it, tipping over the block. And then the ace by Wilma Rivera. And look at that passion. The level is as high as it can be here in Orlando today. Wow. We're going to catch our breath. We hope you do as well as we get ready for set three in Orlando.
we welcome you back to the city beautiful Orlando, Florida. And we've got a dandy of a matchup between the Atlanta Vibe and the Orlando Valkyries here at Edition Financial Arena on the campus of the University of Central Florida. That has been, some of these shots are the perfect embodiment of the energy level in this gym. This crowd has been loud, they have been proud. And man, we're just in week one of the Federation. Exactly. exactly, this is the perfect beginning to such a historic year for indoor women's volleyball. Quite literally changing the game as we get set for set number three. Michaela White will kick things off like she did in the opening set of the match. These teams have swapped sides. This is the only time they swap. If you tune into college volleyball, you might be familiar with the fact that they swap sides every single set. The intermission swap, the only swap of the match. Back set to Karis Watson, and we've got a setter change here for Atlanta. It's Marley Montserrat, one of several Gators on the floor tonight, who also cut her teeth at UCLA playing some beach volleyball. Marley Montserrat is an all-around baller. During her time setting for UF, she earned 11 SEC Setter of the Week honors and three SEC Overall Player of the Week nods in her career. She knows how to command an offense, and she's going to lead this team very well. Quality set by Wilma Rivera for Kaz Brown. Those quicks to the middle are money for both sides here tonight. And you will notice that set is pushed, but it's still quick. It's a 31, and that's to spread out the blocker. Kaz Brown does a good job seeing the hands of the middle blocker and weaving around it. Jump top spin there for Shina Joseph. Leah Edmond handles the heat. Overpass, though. Gillen nearly hammered it to the floor, and there's that quality defensive effort that we've seen on both sides. This time, tip the cap to the Vibe, doing just enough to win the point. And that was a really scrappy decision by Marley Monterey to go over on two with that almost behind her head tip. That's her beach experience coming into play right there, that scrappiness. She goes back to serve for Atlanta. Jill Gillen off the block. It stays with Orlando's second effort, this time off speed. What a smart shot by Gillen. She's been frustrated by the block a little bit more recently. That is the perfect antidote, Madison. And that's exactly what you have to do when you're undersized. You need to run a faster set and you need to have a lot of range. You need a lot of shots in your arsenal, and she's got all the shots. And now we'll see her serve it in. Low and flat, taken care of by hands. Quick set to the middle. Nice connection between Marley Monserey and Fanning. And that's Shelly Fanning's eighth kill. Really high efficiency as a middle attacker. She's leading the team right now in kills, and it's because of all that efficiency. When she gets set, she takes care of it. Baylor's all-time leader in hitting percentage, also top 10 for the Bears in terms of blocks. And speaking of blocks, she came crashing in there with Presley, a Baylor duo who grew up together and played with each other at the collegiate ranks, teaming up for the tandem. And Yasiana Presley was a 2019 ABCA, ESPN, W, and Big 12 Conference Player of the Year. She's very experienced in setting the block on that right side. One of the most explosive players in the country. Several seasons ago, Baylor made it all the way to the national semifinals. Presley this time tooling the block. Smart shot for Yasiana. And it's worth noting, too, I mentioned this in set one, folks. Yasiana Presley was picked up after she was waived by Omaha. She's only been with this team, as Coach Dagenet told us, several days. And that's just such a testament to how athletic she is, that she can gel with this culture and get into the chemistry of the team so quickly. That time dug over and put down by the Valkyries. Kaz Brown will now head back to serve. Low and flat in the tape. Service error point to the vibe. Shelly Fanning, we mentioned her collegiate career for the most part as a pro, has played in Puerto Rico 
She serves it in. Shina Joseph swinging away from the right pin. Off speed, Linehan. An eye hammers it from the pin, and despite their best efforts, Atlanta couldn't get it over. And there was a lot of players right there coupled around that ball, but Adora Anai is such a leader. She steps up and takes it. We see here scrappy dig by her. And when you're that athletic and you're that powerful, all it takes sometimes is a little hop and a snap with your wrist. Oh boy, Yasiana Presley right through the seam once again. That swing looks so good. She has to be one of the most deceptive attackers out there. You see her drop her thumb. She has a lot of manipulation over that ball, and she's able to place it wherever she wants in a very sneaky manner. A quick point in response for Orlando, going back to Presley for the moment, since she's been the hot hand here in this set for Atlanta. Has played her pro volleyball in France. Also played in the Athletes Unlimited League this past season. Finished 18th amongst all the pros in AU. One point third set. First to 25, win by two. Back row, Edmund. Gillen didn't have a whole lot to work with there. Point to the vibe. That set just a little inside. Wilma Rivera pulling off the net because of that pass, trying to get that set out to the pin. Just left it a little too far inside, and Jill Gill didn't hit it at his highest point. Linehan now serving it in. Out of the middle, there's Michaela White. Here's the head coach of the UCF Knights taking over for Todd Dagenet. Coach Jenny, who had been here for so long under Coach Dagenet, he said, you know what, it's special coming back here. It's special seeing all the familiar faces. He's tried to stay away from the program to let her develop it in her own way, but he's still very much as a fan. And you can tell when he speaks about it that he has a lot of love and respect for UCF. Back row, and there's a lot of love and respect for a back row attack. Always a lot of fun to watch, and Atlanta executes it to perfection. I mentioned Coach Dagenet, who put UCF on the map. The Knights, for their part, winners of five straight conference championships. Also won one when they were in the Conference USA. A little miscommunication there by the Vibe. Point goes to the Valkyries. We're tied up. And we talk about Shina's hang time. Look at that reaching. That set a little high. But she has so much hang time. She waited in the air, tipped that ball, and that's something that they've been working on with her. Nine up, set three. Make it 10-9 Vibe. That's going to be Orlando's 11th service error in comparison to six aces. Tight pass. And Orlando makes the most of it. A joust at the net and it falls across the tape. Wilma Rivera is laughing it off like I meant to do that all the time. And that's a setter versus a middle right there. But a lot of the times, it's who touches the ball last, who has the most power behind that touch and can hang in the air for the longest. And that one went to Wilma. And that's an ace serve for Orlando, Jill Gillen. Jill Gillen thrives in these big pressure situations. She loves the fans. She loves feeding off of the crowd. We saw it throughout her entire collegiate career, and we're seeing it now. Gillen, who originally was drafted by Omaha, then traded to Orlando along with UCF's own Abby Hansen. Making the most of it early. Brown on the slide. Right side attack. Edmund will want a touch call and won't get it. We mentioned before that last match versus Omaha, Edmund had 27 kills. 
Right now, she's got three, so a little more quiet of a night for Edmond so far. Edmund, the first player to sign a contract with the Pro Volleyball Federation. Here's Gillen, back row. Two Vibe players trip trying to get to it. Monterey and Linehan, and that found the antenna. Scrappy play by Atlanta. Never say die kind of mentality over there. But that set just a little too far outside. Edmund had nowhere to go with it. Service error by Jill Gill. And that'll send Edmund back to serve for the Vibe. Orlando leading at 13-11. One set apiece here at Edition Financial Arena. There's a nice block for the Vibe. Again, if you're just joining us, they had 16 in the first ever match in the Pro Volleyball Federation against the Omaha Supernovas. Yep, coach told us that they did a really good job closing off those seams and taking away hitters' primary shots. Yasiana doing a really good job with that right there. Whoa, back row, Jill Gillen. We got to find out Jill Gillen's how high she can jump her vertical because she is skying right now through the back row, seeing, seeing the hands of Shelly Fanning, identifying that middle block and hitting away from it. Service error point right back to Atlanta. And Fanning herself will go back to serve. <laughs> Set to the middle, there's White. Dug up by Edmund. Out of the middle, there's Karis Watson. Boy, it'll be interesting to see if number 16 and Red can get hot again here in set three. And look at that one hand set by Marley Massere. Right to the hands of her middle attacker who hit that ball so perfectly in the deep corner. Oh, Orlando had problems there on serve, receive a funky looking pass, and it'll be a service ace for Fanning. Atlanta leads it 15 14 as we approach the media timeout. has been here in Orlando, Florida. And you just love to see all the young fans cheering their brains out here <laughs> in a city where there are so many amusements, so many things you can do, places you can go, and thousands have come here to Edition Financial Arena. Need I say anything more as they sing Sweet Caroline and we get back underway. An eye right there on the pin, number 14 in blue. And that was perfectly placed. You see there dropping her thumb to the deep down the line, right in between two defenders. Really solid technology there that was very much so in and perfectly placed. And that's served by Wilma Rivera. Karen's out. And Madison, I want to ask you something. So each of these teams, and all of the teams in this league are comprised of players. We've talked about their skill level, their professional backgrounds. They've really only had some of the neighborhood of about a month or 12 really practices to get used to each other, get acclimated with each other. 
and now they're taking on a team full of some of the best in the world. How tough is that? Oh, it's, it's so incredibly tough. It takes a really long time to get the chemistry between the setters and the hitters and the passers to learn the new system that you're in and to settle into your role. So it takes a long time, but the talent is already so impressive. I can't imagine what we'll see at the end of the season. Yeah, this is what we're looking at at the starting gate. And speaking of the setter, Atlanta is on their second one here of the match. They started with Tori Stringer. And Stringer has not played since set two. It's been Marley Monterey ever since. And so far, so good for Atlanta here in set three. They've got a one-point lead, 17-16 over Orlando, who won set one, 25-20. And there's Michaela White nodding things up 17 apiece. And that's a gimme for Michaela White. She was there. She was set. Reaches up with that nice long reach, presses her arms over the net, tips it back down. And Adora Anai back to serve. She's played in South Korea, Turkey, Puerto Rico, Ukraine, and Greece. She won a league championship in both Greece and in Puerto Rico. A bona fide winner. And she's here in Orlando serving. There's a huge block, though. Karis Watson. And Karis Watson did a really good job getting there, getting her feet set. Pressing over the net, that block was set perfectly. The timing was perfect. Well executed block. Atlanta leads by one once again. Gellin rejected. Good coverage by an eye. Joseph lets it fly. Joust at the net. Atlanta comes away with it. Edmund cross court. A rocket shot by Leah Edmund. And there's the Edmund that we saw in their first match against Omaha. So powerful. Able to hit that ball in every single area of the court, going there with a sharp cross court swing. Sharp serve picked up by Gillen, who now transitions out of it. Back row, Linehan into the table. And that was a smart decision by Linehan. Just couldn't quite get that tip over the block and over the net to score. Orlando trails by one, 19-18. White serves it cross court. Edmund on serve received. Now in transition, paints the end line. And can we talk about that serve receive pass for a second? She angled her platform so perfectly right to the setter's hands. That is harder than it looks, people. Perfect angle right to the setter, and then she transitioned up. Nice long approach. All that power behind her swing and got the kill. Now it'll be interesting to see if there's a challenge. We heard the horn, but I don't think that Orlando challenged that point. Substitution hold. As Atlanta has brought in a sub. Piapo serves it in. Gillen cross court. Edmund off the edge of the block. Good coverage by Gillen. Back row and I picked up by Yasiana Preston. Gillen splits the blockers. Jill Gillen powering through. Really notice her arm swing. She cranks her arms all the way back, which allows her to jump as high as she jumps, using all of her momentum, the sky and the air, and power through a block that's much taller than her. Atlanta has entered the red zone. Orlando right behind him. The red zone being the last five points of any given set. Shina Joseph paints that end line with an ace serve. High risk, high reward. And that one found the floor. And it doesn't get much closer than this. Look at that. Just painting the back end line. If you're going to aim for anywhere, if you can control it, that's where you want to aim for. Very difficult to pass. A truly perfect serve as we're knotted up at 20. This one has Edmund on the deck, and there's a block! Kaz Brown! What can Brown do for you? Evidently a lot. 
she can do it all and she has been. Look at that reach, really long arms. Her timing is there. It's not just throwing your arms up, it's throwing your arms up and pressing and angling your palms down. Orlando up 21 to 20. Back here in Orlando, where the homestanding boundaries have earned a set point in both sets one and two. They won set one, 25-20, had their set point opportunity slip away in set two. We're not there yet, but they lead it 21-20 here in set three. Shina Joseph has been a lightning bolt here over the last few points, serving it, and they're right on cue. Of course, I mentioned that, and there's a service error. <laughs> That's how it always goes. It's always. the announcer jinx, but that was a really good timeout by the Vibe to ice the server. One timeout left for Atlanta. Orlando still has a couple. Marley Monserey will serve it in. Pivotal third set. Slide attack, Kaz Brown. Yasiana Presley dug up by an eye. And it looks like Leah Edmond is hurt. Out at the pin. Taking an extra second to get up. And Madison, you mentioned to me that it looked like Tori Stringer got hurt at the end of set two. Mm -hmm. So some injury issues here for Atlanta. We certainly wish them all the best. Yep, sometimes when you come down uneven, let's say you put more pressure on your right leg or your left leg, it can twinge a muscle. It's easier to hurt yourself, but it looks like she's okay. It's a great sight to see. She's one of the brightest stars in professional volleyball. You certainly would hate to see her go down with an injury. So Edmund stays in, and we're tied at 21. Montserrat will serve it in once more. Gellin on serve, receive. Now in transition, off speed, picked up by Edmund. Hence, out of system ball, Presley shoves it over. On the slide attack, Brown picked up by Hentz. Presley! And Atlanta lead by one. Presley has come in and made an immediate impact. She's got, she's got six kills. She came in, made an impact, really powerful swings. As I said before, a really deceptive attacker, but we have to give so much credit to Morgan Hentz for keeping her team in system. We talked about it before, but she's a three-time first-team All-American, a three-time national champion, three-time Pac-12 champion, and Pac-12 libero of the year three times. It does not get more impressive than Morgan Hentz. Yeah, she's been on Team USA for the last couple of years. You certainly like her chances to remain on the U.S. national team. And Madison, you talked to Coach Dagenet about her before the match, and he said that she has an innate ability to see what other people can and to read what other people can. Exactly. She sees things other people can't see. She reads really well. She digs really well. It's almost like someone made the joke that she can read where the hitter's gonna go even before they know where they're going to go. She has that good of defensive abilities. And she's also, if you wanna liken it to the point guard of the back row, she directs traffic back there 
And Coach Dagenet said that she has a way of verbalizing things that is as good as anybody he's ever seen. Exactly. We watched a practice yesterday, and she was coaching up the back row the entire time. You know all the players out there really respect her for her abilities, her coaching abilities, and her leadership qualities. All right. Well, Hentz and the Vibe are going to get back to work. One-point lead, 22-21, set three in Orlando. Slide attack, Brown! But <laughs> missed it long, no touch call. Adora and I is lobbying for one, and I do believe I just saw Amy Pauley press the challenge button on the tablet. And the ball is very clearly out, so they're going to be challenging a touch on the block. Yeah, worth again noting, if you're just tuning in, the Pro Volleyball Federation using Bolt 6 technology. And Amy Pauley using her second challenge. And this Bolt 6 technology, folks, is incredible. It's a hefty financial investment. You got to commend all the owners of all the teams in the league for making that commitment. But it's the same stuff that's used in the Olympics. It's the same stuff that's used in the Olympic qualifiers, in the VNL, which is the tops of international league type volleyball. And so. That's the kind of investment that you're seeing here. And if you liken it to when you watch Grand Slam tennis, you get incredible views from 22 high depth cameras around the gym. And I love it too, because it takes the subjectivity out of the game. It's objective. It is what it is. And the cameras catch it perfectly every time. And there's the tablet that Amy Pauley used to call the challenge. We saw that thumb flex on that instant replay. That is what high depth camera work will do for you. It's Point Orlando. Late here in set three. Big moment for both. And there's Presley off the block and down. And that's really impressive. It's an out of system play. The ball is set by Morgan Hens from very deep in the court. Yasiana coming up big for her team, tooling off the high hands. Should be 23-22, I believe, here at Addition Financial Arena. But after the challenge, there we go. Some of the technology in and around here that we're still getting used to. We're still saying it was 23-21, but it's still, as we thought, a one-point set in favor of the Vibe. Dora and I swinging away from the pin. Back set Presley, saved in the back row by Cruz. Linehan picked up by an eye. Wilma Rivera called her own number, does so again. And the point goes to the Valkyries. There are a lot of hands and there are a lot of motions right there near the net. And I believe somebody in red might have clipped it. Back to serve for the Valkyries, Kaz Brown! 23 apiece, Kaz Brown serves it in. Lenahan off speed. Rivera puts it to the floor! Set point coming up for the Valkyries! One of the things that makes Wilma Rivera so good and dynamic is her offensive-minded approach to the game. You see there, she could have set the ball, but she felt the situation called for her to go over aggressively, and she took advantage of it. Atlanta calling their timeout. They're going to ice Orlando here, but, you know, Madison, I'm going to go back to what we talked about at the beginning of the show. This is an Orlando team, picked sixth preseason of seven teams in this league, yet Amy Pauley loves the bunch of the camaraderie that they have. I love it. One of her mottos that she said that this team goes by is win or lose, who do you want to get on the bus with you at the end of the day? That's who she recruited, and there's not a single person on that floor she said she doesn't want on the bus with her. 
and we loved that analogy. It's true, no matter what, everyone's getting on the same bus after a game, win or lose. So she recruited the people over the player almost. She certainly did. It's a philosophy that she attributed to who she called her first real boss, Josh Steinbach at Villanova. And so she's taken that and applied it forward. She's been a head coach in the college ranks at UAB. She was an associate head coach at USC before taking the job here. And so she's gone coast to coast coaching volleyball. And she's looking, as well as the rest of her team, to go up two sets to one over the Atlanta Bob. Set point Orlando, here we go. Quick set goes to the middle and thin. An eye waits on it. And it's picked up by Edmund. Linehan tooling the block. And hey, we like to see setter kills. And we had a setter kill right before that in Wilma Rivera. And then a setter kill by Marley Monterey. These are some high level, high skilled setters. They've got good court awareness. They've got good situational awareness. And they know when to be offensive minded. Seen that a time or two when Marley Monterey was wearing blue and orange for Mary Wise, to be sure. Casey Evans serves it in, the George product. An eye, cross court dug up. Great work by Evans. And there you go, Linehan tooling the Orlando block, and Atlanta brings up a set point of their own. And sometimes that's all you can do. The block was set in front of her. The block was up, the block was pressed, but she swung through the ball, tooled off the outside hand of Wilma Rivera. And so Orlando will call their final timeout here of the set, trailing set point for the first time here tonight. Madison, I don't know if we could have asked for a tighter or more fun match than the one we've gotten here tonight. Yes, Orlando won set one, 25-20, but at one point before the Valkyries won the last three points of that set, Atlanta trimmed the lead down to two, and in each of the last two sets, both teams have stood at set point. We talked about it before. This was gonna be a back and forth battle when both teams comprise of the best of the best. Of course, it's gonna be faster. It's gonna be more powerful. There's gonna be long rallies because the defense is as good as the offense. And this is exactly what you want. And these Orlando fans absolutely love it. This arena is so loud. The energy is so high. Growing the game right before your eyes. Atlanta stands at set point. An eye off the top of the block, picked up by Evans. Back row, it's long. Point Orlando. I do want to give credit to the Atlanta Vibes block. They've had really good block touches. They're doing a good job slowing down Orlando's offense with those block touches, allowing Atlanta to have an opportunity to score. Well, we've talked a good bit about the Bolt 6 technology. Let's keep talking about it, shall we? We're going to take a look at it once again. Again, if you're just joining us, there are certain things that can be reviewed utilizing this technology and courtesy of Block of Bolt 6, excuse me, you don't need to worry about in and out calls. The technology will take care of that. So we're talking about net faults, antenna touches, foot faults, whether or not it touched a player on its way out, who it touched last. And Atlanta thinks it grazed somebody in blue on its way through. Did it? I'm not sure. Well, there you have it. No block touch. And just like that, we are all tied up 25 to 25. The second straight set that we will go beyond the 25 point mark. First to 25, win by two, win sets one through four in this best three out of five match. If we get to the fifth, it's first to 15, win by two. That's a service error. And now Atlanta stands on the precipice with set point for the second time here in set number three. And it looks like we got a substitution, and that is a great sight to see if you're a fan of Atlanta and a fan of high-quality volleyball players. Tori Stringer checking in, I believe now for the first time here in set three, trusted by Coach Dagenet in a huge moment. 26-25, Atlanta. Nice pass, wide out of the middle. Picked up by Hentz. Lenahan picked up by Anai. 
and Orlando can't get it over. Atlanta wins set three. Twenty-seven, twenty-five. the score here in set three. Atlanta leads it two sets to one. back to Edition Financial Arena here on the campus of UCF in Orlando, Florida. The home opener of the Orlando Valkyries, their first matchup of the season, in fact, taking on the Atlanta Vibe. 1-0 after winning the first match in the history of the Pro Volleyball Federation in Omaha against the Supernovas. So pleased to have you with us, Sean Davidson, alongside Madison Fitzpatrick in a must-win set for Orlando, who won set one but dropped very tight sets two and three to the vibe. And that right there is Shina Joseph taking advantage of a block that's not closed. You see there, there's an open hole. There's a seam, and she drills it low and through it. Orlando on the board first. First to 25, win by two to claim the set. And if it's Atlanta, they will also claim the match three to one over Orlando. And if you're tuning in with a vested interest in the Valkyries, They've got to win this one and a fifth set, which would go to 15. First to 15, win by two to claim that one. One all here in set four. Jill Killen rockets one right through the scene. It doesn't matter if that ball is set low or set tight or set off. You see the bump set by Wilma a little off the net, but Jill is given a gap in between those two blockers and she has a lot of power and a lot of expertise to drill it through. Shiny Joseph back to serve. Caught the tape. Picked up well by Hintz. 
Oh, that's a nice block. Orlando has been so physical tonight at the net, and it was an onslaught of blocks early that helped them build a huge lead in set one. They're at it again early here, set four. Yep, Wilma Rivera does a good job at setting the block in the right location. That's very important to blocking. She sets it in the right location, and Kaz runs to her, jumps up, presses her arms over the net, and gets the block. Service error there by Shina Joseph. Two in favor of the Valkyries as they await the serve of Marley Monterey. Monterey, whose older sister has also played for Mary Wise at Florida. A couple of sister trios, I believe, who've played their college volleyball in Gainesville, and every single one of them has been tremendous. Atlanta here struggling just to get that ball out of the net. That's going to take at least four contacts. Point Orlando. One thing that Coach Polly mentioned about Orlando is another one of their mottos, in addition to the bus motto, is they've got that dog in them. And Jill Gillen is a perfect example of having that dog in her. You saw her up at the net ready if that ball were to come over. Yeah, she says that because she believes, and frankly, I don't disagree with her, the term grit is used a lot. And so the team will actually bark at times whenever they make a, I'm going to use the word grit, a gritty play that indicates, yeah, you got that dog in you. And so they're going to need to summon more of that here in set four in a must-win set. They lead it by one for the moment. Shina Joseph off speed from the back row. Out of the middle, there's Fanning. Oh, nice coverage by Killen. An eye, second effort, picked up by Linehan. Back row, Edmund. Running around the set on the slide, but hitting it, I believe, into the antenna was Orlando, and so that'll be a point to Atlanta. Yep, Kaz running the slide. It looks like she let the ball just get a little too far outside. She didn't cut it off fast enough, and therefore it hit the antenna. And that's something that they were working on in practice the other day swinging earlier on the slide instead of letting it travel too far out to the pin. Whoa! Pardon that thought, Wilma Rivera would like a word. I mean, how about a way to take control of a game? I said it before, but she is so offensive-minded. She can feel the opposing block. She's got such good situational awareness, and she knows when to go for the kill. Yassiana Presley once again picked up by Gillen. Nice up by the youngster. Back set Presley, sharp angle. And I just sends it over. Off speed, high ball, in a hand, backhands it across. Both teams out of system here. Back row attack, and that caught the tape. Stayed on their side of the net, and Orlando claims that point to lead it by two. Back set, Presley off speed. Gillen covers beautifully once again, but Anai had that set come over her shoulder, it looked like Madison, and was facing a double block too. Exactly, that's one of the hardest sets to attack. It's coming over your shoulder. You have to look behind you. It's coming over your head. You don't have an approach. And to get up and swing at its highest point is very difficult. Point to Atlanta. Orlando leads it by one. Gillen. Boy, she's been fun to watch. Presley, so too. An eye going off speed. Adora Anai has every shot in the book. We've seen her hammer some deep angle. We've seen her hit some sharp angle. We've seen her turn it down the line. And right there, taking some speed off of it. She really mixes up her shots, and that's difficult for Atlanta to read. And the variety and the well-rounded nature of the game for Adora and I. One of the things that Amy Pauley told us with some of these players who've played internationally for a while, their role when they go to Greece or when they go to Puerto Rico is to just hammer balls. And so they're trying to redevelop and re-refine their games. And there is Michaela White. She just let the hammer drop on that one. And that's a perfect example of hitting a ball at its highest point. You see her there reaching and snapping at the ball, cutting it off quickly before it drops. 
Looks like we got a momentary delay for a slick spot on the floor. We'll send Wilma Rivera now back to serve. Aggressive serve, though it may be, it was long, point Atlanta. Although that serve was out, Wilma Rivera has put on a really impressive showing here today. 100%. Yeah, Sienna Presley steps to the back row to serve, and there is Shina Joseph. Shina Joseph, a player who Amy Pauley told us Madison really wants to be great, really wants to develop all the skills, and they've been working on speeding her up. No hesitation there. Exactly. That's exactly what Coach Pauley wants out of Shina. Attacking the ball, quickly swinging on it, snapping when it's at its highest point. And then you see how high she gets, how high her vertical is. When she's doing all of that right, she's difficult to stop. Yeah, one of her greatest gifts is her hang time. If you rely too much on that, you erase some of your own opportunities. Back underway, here's Gillen. What a response from Orlando. Their largest lead, really, Madison, since set one. Exactly, and then we see Gillen here transitioning off the net. She didn't have her full approach with her, but she was still able to hit off the high hands. It was a solid block touch, just a little too far out of reach from Morgan Hentz. 10-6 Valkyries. Yasiana Presley lets it fly. Back row, Anai off the edge of a triple block. Linehan picked up by Murphy. Gillen tooling the block. Smart shot. And when you're 5'7", and I know I talk about her height a lot, but it is so incredibly impressive what she can do with that height. But sometimes you have to tool the block, you have to get creative with your swing. We'll be right back after this. Orlando up 11-6. said it before, I'll say it again. What a fun volleyball match here in Orlando. Their home team, the Valkyries, have had set point in every set to this point, but dropped sets two and three beyond the 25-point mark, no less, and now need to win set four. So far, so good. They lead it 11 to six. Welcome to Edition Financial Arena, everybody, alongside the Beach Volleyball All-American at Florida State, Madison Fitzpatrick. I'm Sean Davison. So pleased to be here with you as we jumpstart in more ways than one, the Pro Volleyball Federation. Orlando wants to go to five. Atlanta wants to end it here in four. And again, the Valkyries lead it by five. It's Adora Anai going back to serve for Orlando. Linehan had to wait on that set. Opportunity for the Valkyries. Off speed, Joseph. Presley launches from the back row, was facing a double block and didn't get it over the tape. And for those who don't know volleyball as well, the 10-foot line, if you're a back row attacker, you cannot jump in front of that 10-foot line. So you can jump behind it and cross over it. Your feet just can't leave the ground in front of it. So Yasiana right there trying and reaching to get it, but that set just a little too tight to the net. 6 Valkyries, Anai will serve once more. Edmund passed it off the floor. And so a free ball opportunity for Orlando. They go to the middle with it, and Karis Watson was ready. 
And Atlanta definitely needed that. I felt Orlando get some momentum. They had a really tough server drilling at them. That was a huge block for the Vibe. That's out. And it goes right back to Orlando. And Kayla White, if you weren't with us earlier, started off Orlando's first ever match with an ace serve. She floats that one in. Edmonds caught some hands, picked up by White. There's a rejection by Atlanta, but Orlando keeps it up. There's a tip by Gillen. She was red hot in set one, had some struggles in two and three, and she is pulling off the, showing off the full repertoire here, Madison. Now, I've got a question for you, Sean. What can't Jill Gillen do? She's hit about every area of the court, done every single shot, like you said. That's her 12th kill of the night. Orlando has doubled up Atlanta here in set four, and there's another back row attack attempt. Yasiana Presley once again into the tank. Marley Monterey is doing a good job spreading out her offense. She's giving every hitter a chance to swing. Yasiana there just letting the ball drop a little too much before attacking it. White serves it in once more. And then shoves it over. Opportunity Orlando again. Anai goes with the tip. Edmund anything but, and she missed it. Missed the hands too. Boy, this thing is getting out of hand here. Midway through set two, Orlando leads it 16 to seven. Timeout, Atlanta. The Vibe could have won this match in this set. Orlando is looking for five. And here in Orlando, the Valkyries lead set four by nine, a must-win set for the homestanding team here at Edition Financial Arena. Setter dump, Monterey had it, pancake to Dora Nye. What a tremendous defensive effort. And then that ball just rolled across the tape and down. Adora Anai with the pancake, keeping the play alive, and then Wilma. Rivera, perfect set right to the hands of Jill, who powers through. She's got a never-say-die attitude, and it really pays off. And this, this entire run by Orlando all starts with the serve. Michaela White doing a really good job behind the service line, attacking that ball aggressively. And Orlando, you mentioned the ratio you strive to have. That has not looked good in black and white. But they have generated tremendous service pressure, haven't they, Madison? Yes, exactly. Sometimes it's not about the aces. It's about the service pressure. And right there, Atlanta with Edmund able to get out of that run, which they so desperately needed to do. Trim the lead down to nine, 17 to eight. For Orlando now. As Karis Watson goes back to serve. Shina Joseph tipped it and had it knocked right back at her. Fanning said, no ma'am. Shelly Fanning waiting in the air, holding, kind of shot blocking that tip, reading really well and sending it down to the ground. Fanning, uh, another one of these players on the floor tonight who just played Athletes Unlimited. What great defense by Atlanta. Out of the middle, Taz Brown picked up by Watson. 
And there you go, tool that block. And that is exactly what Atlanta has done. Orlando has been so really imposing at the net, Madison. And at some point in time, you have to think if you're Atlanta, if you keep hitting it into those hands, at some point, you're going to tool it. Exactly. And Leah Edmond comes at it with so much power, and she sees the hand. She identifies the block really well. Gillen. Presley dug up by an eye. Rivera tried to climb through the bench to get to that one, but to no avail, it's out of play. Point by. Timeout by Orlando. They've seen enough. That's a 3 0 run now, Madison, for Atlanta. What do you like out of what you've seen here from the last sequence of points by the Vibe? Well, the Vibe is doing a good job now keeping themselves in system. Orlando, throughout the past couple points, throughout the past almost 10 points, has gone on a run because they're serving aggressively and Atlanta hasn't really been in system. And the point of serving aggressively is to stop the opposing team from being able to run their entire offense. You want to limit how many offensive weapons the opposing team has. So that's the point of serving aggressively. Atlanta, throughout these past couple points, has done a good job controlling it. Solid job on defense and shutting down that momentum of Orlando. And Madison, I know there's a lot of folks tuning in that know volleyball well and know what in system versus out of system is. But for the folks that are like so many here, maybe watching volleyball for the first time, what do you mean when you mean in system versus out of system? It's a great question. In system is when the pass is to the setter and the setter can run her entire offense. She can run the outside, she can run the right side, she can run the middle, she can run her back row. So in system is when the setter has the ability to run all of her weapons. Out of system is when she no longer has that capability. So you always want to be in system with a solid pass Atlanta doing a good job these past few points doing that. Sometimes you'll see they'll target the setter and serve receive, pull her out on first contact where she can't be the one to set the weapons. And there's Wilma Rivera. I believe Atlanta was encroaching above the net and put a hand on a ball that wasn't theirs to do so. Exactly, you can't go over the net and interfere with the ball on the other side of the net, and that's what just happened with Atlanta. That'll send Carly Scott back to serve. Second time we've seen her in this match. The player with that tenacious Midwest attitude doesn't like to get a ball right by her. A workhorse in the gym has cut her teeth in beach as well. And that is a tremendous swing. And talking about Carly Scott, I do believe playing beach makes you a scrappier indoor player. She's had a lot of success on the beach, playing for the AVP, a first place in Laguna Beach Open, a third place in Central Florida. A lot of success indoor and on the beach. Yeah, the AVP tournament here in Central Florida is in nearby Polk County. Excuse me, Lake County as Atlanta signs out to remain somewhat within touch. Lead down to seven for the moment. China Joseph subs back in to replace Carly Scott. It'll be Marley Monterey to serve it in for the vibe. Well, we got some business to attend to on the TerraFlex first. Got to make sure it's dry and safe for everybody. These teams have been diving all over the floor, giving their all-out effort. You would expect nothing less as we get Pro League Format Volleyball kicked off here in the States, and what a start it's off to. Out to the pin, and Gillen, what a save by member Manet. Back row attack, and that'll find the floor. A nine again. And let's first take a look at this dig. A one-arm dig by member Manet, who's been doing really solid in the back row, keeping the play alive throughout these past couple points, but sometimes the power of Adora Anai is too difficult to dig. Amber Manet, just her second year as a professional, played collegiately at Missouri and at Pittsburgh. 
Part of a tremendous run that Pittsburgh has been on under Dan Fisher. And speaking of a tremendous run, there's Wilma Rivera calling her own number as the Valkyries inch closer to winning set four. Wilma Rivera so aggressive, so offensive minded and very confident. That was a gimme ball and she took it. Back set to Edmund. Oh, that's a nice swing by Leah Edmund. And that was a nice back set by Shelly Fanning, the middle. <laughs> a little pin to pin action. Pretty. Really pretty set her hands. And so for those who don't know, pin to pin is when you're setting from one sideline to the other sideline. You really have to crank to set that ball all the way to the opposing player's shoulder, and she did a really good job with that. And don't get me wrong, Madison. Middles are the most efficient hitters on the floor traditionally, and they love to do what they do best, which is block. But you will find nothing they find more joy in than having a quality set. It is fun because it's something they don't usually get to do. So of course it's it's unique. It's fun to do. Orlando leads set four by nine. Rivera got to it. And despite that screaming pass, somehow making its way over the net, it ended up in Atlanta's bench. Fanning had Dylan to the floor. Anai in transition, caught the sideline. Nobody around. I said it before, Anaya has so much power. First of all, the set from Wilma, pin to pin, perfectly to Anai's shoulder. And then Anai with that sharp cross-court swing. She has so much ball control, so much control over every single swing she hits. Uh, one of a number of players who has Team USA in her background actually played for the U.S. Women's National Team and won, and, and won gold at the Pan American Cup in 2018. Cass Watson dumps that attack in the net. And just like that, in a lopsided set four, Orlando stands at set point. Rivera gets it in. Back set, Presley, and got it just inside the block. And something that Coach Dejanay talked to us about before is when they are in system, when his Atlanta team is in system, they are having trouble converting those points to kills. But right there, they just did a really good job of that. That's something that he's emphasizing with this team. When you have a good pass, you have to take advantage. Presley moves to the back row to serve it in. Gillen off the top of the block. And Atlanta thought that it hit the floor off of Monterey. It got kicked around a bit. It ended up being Atlanta point anyway. Still set point. A couple handfuls of them, in fact, for Orlando. They need to win the set to have a chance to win the match. Joseph off speed, picked up by Monterey. Member Manet goes to work. And Orlando shuts it over and down. Adora Anai sometimes makes it look easy. Deep down the line swing tip, excuse me, doesn't even have her full approach. She just has such good court awareness. She sees the open court and power tips it to it. Could you not be more entertained? Set five coming up next.
What a match here at Addition Financial Arena on the campus of the University of Central Florida in Orlando, Florida, as we usher in, as we continue to usher in, really, the Pro Volleyball Federation and the Orlando Valkyries, the fifth of seven teams to see action here in this opening week. Atlanta was in the opening match at Omaha, came away with a five-set win. That was just a few days ago, Madison, and now they're playing five again. Exactly, and I think it is important to note that Leah Edmond took 70 swings on the ball just two days ago. That does wear on your body. But if we know anything from their last match, Atlanta fights through adversity. And I'm expecting a dogfight in this fifth set. Well, it's Atlanta that strikes first here in set number five. In case you're new to volleyball, in case you're not familiar, it's first to 15, win by two for the match. Karis Watson sends it in. Out of the middle, Kaz Brown had it dug up by Linehan. What a great up by Alley. That one dug over the net, and it goes back to Orlando. Joseph, high reach. Backside, Presley. Nice rally to get things going. And I got there to it. Once again, dug over by the Valkyries. Third time, this time is stuffed. Stay in it long enough. And whether you say you got that dog in you or whether you say you're gritty, either way, it results in a point for Orlando. And look at this, this floor defense from both sides. Both teams reading the ball so well, lining up on the hitter's shoulder and reading those balls. But Kaz Brown, like she has been doing all night long, shut that ball down. Joseph, that's a service error. Each team will have two timeouts two challenges and eight substitutions here in this fifth and final set. Errors, you can't afford them. In-system volleyball is especially at a premium when the set is as tight and as quick as fifth sets so typically are. Nice up by Hans, played it up beautifully to Montserrat. That is hammered off the top of the block by Edmund. What a strong start to set five for Atlanta. And the Atlanta vibe their block touches are really saving them a lot on defense, and then Morgan Hens digging it up. And Leah Edmond hits at such a high point over the net and snaps at the ball at its highest point. Because Kaz Brown is very tall, so to hit off the top of her head, you've got to be skying. Monterey serves it in. Picked up by Murphy on the slide attack. Brown says it's down and in. Now, you can't challenge that, but I think Orlando is going to challenge something within that sequence. So, Bolt 6 technology, which we've talked about a few times, has the ability to determine whether a ball is in or out, and it will tell the up and down referee as much. So you don't really have a need to press the challenge button for that. In fact, there aren't even lines judges anymore. And that's such incredible technology that it can generate a result that quickly. This is a fast game. Edmund 
off speed. And Wilma Rivera has been the winner of a number of jousts at the net. Just shoving it inside the block. That's the second joust that Wilma Rivera has beaten Shelly Fanning on. Shelly Fanning a middle, but Wilma just touching the ball for a little bit longer, pressing it onto her side. And there are those Bolt 6 cameras, and what a tremendous job they do of getting you a detailed vision of the court and clarifying really tight and tough calls. Atlanta, though, wants this set to be as lopsided as they can make it. Fanning with the stuff block. And kids, if you're watching this, middles, take note right there. That was perfect block form by Fanning. And Atlanta, as I mentioned, won in five sets in Omaha. Again, just tremendous work defensively. More on that in a second. Hence, with the out-of-system ball to Presley. Picked up by Gillen. Joseph had it stuffed. And so Atlanta stays in, and that was a huge part of the equation for them in set five. The defense allowing them to hang in there, hang in there, hang in there. They trailed 13-10 and won the last five points. Orlando likewise find themselves trailing by three, and they call timeout. And Shelly Fanning, the player who just blocked that ball right there, had a really successful college career. She's the first player in Baylor history to earn all Big 12 conference distinction four times, including three first team. She's also their career leader in hitting percentage with a 347 hitting percentage. And in total blocks, she ranks ninth in Baylor history with 415. So she has been a really solid blocker, a very solid middle for a long time. Indeed she has. And she has really driven things along. And I'll tell you what, one of the things you see here, Madison, in these pro ranks, players taking the reins. And I'm not saying that these coaches aren't doing their job, but these players are also doing their fair share of coaching, too. Exactly. Each of these players has such a depth of experience playing internationally, winning college championships. They have played under many coaches. They have a lot of experience. They've been playing at a high level for a long time. So they kind of, at this point, know what to do. And they kind of do coach themselves out there. The coach is obviously extremely valuable, but these players are as high of a level as you can get. Back underway here in set five. Edmund laying out on defense. Linehan all over the block, picked up by Anai, who now goes to work in transition. Point Orlando. And Atlanta's looking a little confused. I believe that the ref said that someone was underneath the net. In the scramble to get that ball up. One of the vibe players slipped, and now they're going to wipe up the floor on their side of the court. So a momentary pause as we get back to the action here. Orlando trailing by two to the bottom. Make it one. That is about as clutch of a serve as it gets. Look at how flat to the net that float serve is, hitting the top tape and toppling over. Orlando within one. Hence jammed up on serve receive. Linehan nearly went into the bench. Free ball opportunity for the Valkyries. Out to an eye. Second effort picked up by Hence beautifully. Presley had to wait on that set. Rivera picks it up on first contact. Out of system ball to an eye. And she goes down the line with it to perfection. An out of system broken play. That's set just a little inside. But Anai has proven time and time again that she can get there because she's so dynamic and athletic. What a response by Orlando. We are knotted up at six here in this decisive fifth set. Out to Linehan and to the floor it goes. Great in-system work there by Atlanta. They want to see more of that. Exactly, perfect in-system pass. And then you see here Michaela White 
was held in the middle for a little too long. Shelly Fanning did a good job holding her there, creating a one-on-one -on -one situation for the outside. An eye off speed. Atlanta leading by one. Kayla White had it rejected. Rivera keeps it up. Tight to the net. Anai gets it over. Back row, Gillen. Would want a touch call, but won't get it. And Gillen right there. Not hitting that ball at its highest point, not being able to get enough snap on it, therefore hitting it out. And Orlando has opted to challenge Amy Pauly hitting the challenge button. And again, we aren't down there on the floor, Madison, so we could tell that that ball was clearly out. And so given that fact, the fact that in and out is not reviewable, I would imagine they're challenging that somebody in red touched that ball on its way out of play. Exactly, from up here, it's very clearly out, let's see. Doesn't look, it does not look close to her arm. No block touch was the initial call, and that will stay. Again, tip the cap to the Volt 6 technology for giving tremendous views all over this gym. 22 high definition cameras all over Edition Financial Arena, and they have been utilized often here in this five center. Two point lead for Atlanta. And Anai misses the end line, point to the Vibe. And I do want to point out the extra work that the Atlanta Vibe's middles are doing. That was a really good block touch by Karis Watson, and then she had to transition off the net and be in the air for that set. Atlanta middles putting in a lot of work. And this Atlanta team, we mentioned how Every one of these teams, to some degree, player-led. Morgan Hentz, Tori Stringer, Leah Edmond have been the terrific trio that really built this roster up, recruited some of their teammates onto this roster. No call yet. And I think that might be an ace serve. It looks like from this point of view that it was in. Shelly Fanning sure thought it was in. Now, one of the things that is unique, too, about the Pro Volleyball Federation is that our officials can also take a look yeah, at all the yeah. monitors and whatnot just to confirm, just to clarify what they thought they saw. And that doesn't count against either team, and that is the right call made here. Four-point lead for Atlanta. An eye off the block. Great defensive work there by Shina Joseph. Orlando is out of system once again. Joseph had it stuffed, and Atlanta is starting to pull away here. Timeout, Orlando. Something that really sticks out to me late in this fifth set is Atlanta's block. We talked about it in their past match against Omaha. They outblocked Omaha 16 to 12. Well, right now they've got 11 blocks as a team, and it's really coming together late in this set. They're doing a good job at tracking the ball, getting their feet there, pressing their arms over the net, and shutting down a very dynamic Orlando offense. So it's Orlando who forced this fifth set in lopsided fashion in set number four. Now trailing by five to Atlanta. And so, Madison, I'll go ahead and ask you, if you're Orlando, what's gone wrong here? And what are you trying to clean up? I think Orlando's getting a little bit ahead of themselves. They were playing really good throughout the first four sets. They need to work on staying in system and doing what they know, setting Adora Anai, who's been on fire, keeping those quick sets to Jill Gillen. Keep spreading out their offense and staying in system. I think they're getting a little ahead of themselves. If they play like they've been playing throughout the past few sets, I think they can come back. Each team had set point opportunities in sets two and three. Atlanta won both late. 
Orlando one sets one and four, and they're going to need an inspired rally. That is a good start here. And that's what it's going to take. There was nowhere for Yasiana to go. That net was shut down. The block was timed perfectly and pressed at the right time. Lola Rivera serves it in, and it's dug over the net. Opportunity once again for the Valkyries. Joseph with a rocket through the seam, trims into that lead even further. You see Joseph there with the long approach and then dropping that thumb, identifying the block really well and weaving it around the defenders. It was perfectly placed and it had a lot of power. So Atlanta has seen enough. Todd Dagenet has called timeout with his What's been at some points here in this set, a five-point lead now trimmed to three. The Vibe are within four points of winning the match. Orlando has won a few in a row to turn up the heat a little bit here in set five. And I do want to point out, Atlanta doing a really good job at spreading out their offense. That's credit to Marley Massere. We've got Leah Edmond with 10 kills, Karis Watson with 10 kills, Shelly Fanning with eight kills. Yasiana Presley with 10 kills. That's a lot of players in double digits. And against an Orlando block that is so strong and powerful and big, you have to spread out the offense, and Atlanta doing a good job late in this fifth set at doing that. Coach Polly was very complimentary of her team's strength and athleticism and mentioned how incredibly strong each and every one of her players were, and we saw a lot of that earlier. We still see it. Atlanta proving they are up to the challenge and plenty strong and athletic themselves. Linehan rockets that right off the top of the block, and there you have it. And Karis Watson, the middle for Atlanta, did a good job holding Michaela White with her, freeing up a one-on-one -on -one situation for the pin attacker who took advantage hitting off the high hands. Atlanta is within three points of claiming their second five-setter to start off this inaugural Pro Volleyball Federation season. Anai goes to work. Three ball opportunity to Orlando. Off speed, off the block. Hentz digs it over. Joseph off the edge of the block. Kept up by Stringer. Joseph will try it again. Dilfer once again there for it. Linehan gets it back in play. And now Orlando is the team that's scrambling and sending a free ball over. Linehan. Murphy did everything she could to keep it up, and it's batted across the net twice. Anai. Kept up by Edmund, but out. And Orlando wins what felt like a must-win point. The importance of this point cannot be understated. You want to win the long rallies deep into this fifth set. Every single point counts. And who better than Adora Anai to finish it perfectly placed down the line. And now Anai will head to the back row to serve it in. She's dropped in a couple of aces. Also has some back row kills. No room for error here for Orlando. Atlanta within three points of winning the match. Joust at the net. White comes out with it. Gillen launches, is rejected. There to cover is Rivera. This is an out-of-system ball to Joseph. Dug up by Edmund. Linehan picked up by Gillen. Back row, Anai off speed. Picked up by Linehan. Tipped at the net by White. It remains with Atlanta. Three ball to Orlando. Gillen off the block and down. And when Jill Gillen has her full approach in front of her, look at her there with the quick set. When you're 5'7", you've got to do something different. She runs the quick set. She tools off of the hands with all of that power. She was put in a one-on-one -on -one situation, and she loves a one-on-one -on -one situation. Every pin hitter does. Boy, these rallies are just getting better and better the later and later we go. Anai will serve it in, trailing by two. Make it three. You can't have that if you're Orlando. It's an aggressive miss, and it looked like it was pretty tight to the end line, but still, that is tough for the Valkyries. I think it is important to note that is the Valkyries' 22nd 
service error of the night. Atlanta within two points of the match. Murphy with a dime of a pass. A quality dig by Hans once again. Said that a bunch tonight. Gillen, second effort. Come on! Have yourself a night, Jill Gillen. That's her 15th kill on the evening. She's got both blockers up in the air. But she places it really well, high down the line over Marley Mozzarella. Audi Cruz will step in for the Valkyries. You think she's seen a moment or two like this in her career? I think she's had about a million moments like this in her career. Kiss off the tape. Edmund had it stopped! Coach Polly said they've got that dog in them. And I think they're showing that right now. Look at these faces. Time out, Atlanta. Look at the intensity of China. This is so much fun to watch. Orlando down by one, 13 to 12. It doesn't get any closer than this in the fifth set. I want to go back to the point that Amy Pauley made to us about the athleticism. She said, and I quote, I hope that viewers at home watching these broadcasts understand how strong and how fast this game is at the professional level and how difficult it is to do what these women are doing. And we have been treated to one heck of a show here tonight. Exactly. When you've got an entire roster of Olympians and All-Americans and national champions, the talent, even on the bench, the talent across the entire roster is incredibly elite. So we've seen a faster game. We've seen really long rallies. We've seen a lot of power. The depth on both of these rosters is absolutely incredible. Both teams have the will to win. Only one is going to. Atlanta clings to a one-point lead. The Valkyries are on a run. Audi Cruz serves once more. Edmund. Joseph had to step back and wait on that one. Off speed, Linehan. Kill in. And this time, Atlanta wins the battle at the net. And I think it's safe to say Atlanta's got that, that dog in them as well. <laughs> Perfect timing on the block. Not letting Jill Gillen get behind them at this point. Pressing over the net, perfectly timed. Marley Matsuri doing a really good job at setting that block and taking away all the seams. Two match points for the vibe. Here's the first. And that'll do it! Good vibes only for Atlanta. They win their second five-setter of the opening week of Pro Volleyball Federation play. It was an all-around showcase from both teams, the best of the best battling it out. And it feels really good to finish on an ace, a really solid float serve just to capitalize that win. Madison, in closing, I'm just going to say this, and you can feel free to chime in wherever you want. Atlanta won tonight and volleyball won tonight. That is so well said, Sean. Volleyball this entire year is going to keep winning. This Pro Volleyball Federation is providing so many incredible opportunities for the sport of volleyball, for the players and the fans. I am so excited to be involved in history. It's truly a pleasure and an honor to be here with thousands of our friends and so many hardworking men and women on our crew. For Madison Fitzpatrick, I'm Sean Davison signing off from Orlando here tonight where Atlanta improves to 2-0 and and Orlando drops a tough five-setter to get things started. We'll see you next time here from Edition Financial Arena.